Hey UTV boondockers. So on today's episode, I'm gonna attempt to put this sawmill together. I bought a sawmill. It's a Frontier OS31. Um, the reason I got the big one is because the other ones, you couldn't get them for, you know, some are eight, 10, 12, 20 weeks. And I needed to get started on this uh, quite soon. So I had to buy the bigger one. Um, this way I could cut my own dimensional lumber and mill things. Uh, it's, it's a perfect uh, setup for me. So anyhow, in this episode, I'm gonna try to do some of the basic assembly. I will tell you that when it comes in, it's on a huge skid. And this is the heaviest part right here the saw head with the motor. Now I opted to go with the electric start 14 horse Kohler as opposed to a smaller Briggs and Stratton. Uh, I think uh, I made a good choice there, uh, but this thing is heavy. I don't even think, you know, a buddy and I could lift it easily. So what I did is I hooked up a chain fall to my hoist. So that way uh, when I get her together, I could drop it down in. These pieces here are some of the frames that will fit down in that hole and this hole and there's another part of the frame i haven't gone into this too much um, for the other posts so these are the two pillars that one of these two pairs will sit in one goes here and there and then the others go up front uh, again haven't got that far the instructions so far i'm not super impressed parts there there's parts all over my shop over here yep there's tons more just tons and tons and tons. But this thing's gonna be wicked cool. I'm gonna be able to cut all kinds of stuff. Um, I opted to get some extra blades. Uh, there's the one that comes with it. I think I got a 10 pack. And then uh, the, it's not a PB, but this thing's beefy. It's right from them, so it's, it's no joke. So I forget the name, I'm sorry. Someone's gonna probably give me a hard time in the comments, but PB, whatever, I'm new to this stuff, so I'm learning. Eventually I'll get all the, the correct terms. So anyhow. Next step, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of these frame rails, we're gonna set them down. Um, I won't video all of that, cause you know you can see, put it together, there's a couple brackets, and then put these in, the bolts go up from underneath. I'm guessing they're gonna be a, a carriage style bolt to fit in the square holes as well. So we'll look through that, I'll film anything that's uh, important that I think uh, that would be good to share. Other than that, stay tuned. We're gonna start putting this thing together and I'm gonna give you an idea of uh, what the next steps are. Okay. After looking at the bag of contents, guess what? I found them. They're carriage bolts. Um, although the instructions, there's a bit to be desired. Um, they did mark all of these bags, which is excellent. Because there's a lot of stuff, right? So what I chose to do um, is flip this up on its side, put the carriage bolts in from the underneath, because I need to put these, these crossbars in next. So I put some weights on it and just ran all the bolts in and just tightened down with my fingers. I'm going to do the same for this side and then I'm going to flip them down flat, loosen them up, put the middle pieces on and, and go for it. Um, the middle braces have these pieces like so <clears throat> that came in a kind of wrapped together. There's these two other ones. I haven't quite figured out where they go yet, but stay tuned. I'm sure we'll figure out where those go. All right, we are back. We've got the uh, basic tracks in. They're snugged because I don't know what the width is supposed to be. Um, just so you know, these upper racks, you can see right there, there's little grooves. So those ride on these tracks, which are not straight. Um, so anyway, these are all just uh, snugged by hand for now. So next up, we're gonna put this outer side on. And uh, remember these guys, I wondered where they went? Well, they go right in here with that long piece facing forward. Same thing over there. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is each of these, see there's three offset screw holes. Every single one should be lined up like that. On the other side, there's two holes at the bottom. So these are for um, some of the accessories, I believe. Uh, maybe the log dogs. But anyhow, um, so that's how you orientate these. You can see the holes at the bottom. Um, I do have an extension over here. I'm not gonna put it on yet. Uh, another little sneak peek because this is so heavy and I'm not going to be able to lift this thing up when I get it on site to uh, cut logs. I bought the trailer. I should have bought it to begin with, saved some freight, but so the trailer's coming and I'm impatient. I'm excited. So that's why I'm putting all this stuff together. Okay. It's progressing. Well, I'm starting to understand their translations. Um, so now I've got the side pieces on the yellow ones. 
and it's starting to shape up. It's looking millish. Um, the next piece that I did um, when we did the yellows is um, we just put a bolt there and then four there and one in the middle down there, the same on the other side. Then the next step was to do this and put these little brackets in. So <clears throat> they're all just, again, finger tight. Nothing's snug yet because I need to get the right dimensions. The only thing strange is uh, this guy over here. Um, so that's just, a, looks like a stopper or something. Probably when it, the, the mill head, the saw head rolls, it'll clamp it down. So and there's one here and the two of them down here, same concept, right? Um, I'll probably end up taking these off when I put the extension on, but uh, again, I'm just sort of dry fitting it to see how it goes. All right. So now I'm going to move on to the next step, but it is shaping up. All right, real quick, I wanted to point out a step that I will be skipping that if you do not have the trailer, you're going to want to do this step. Um, these are basically the adjustable feet and they go in this hole and so on in every single one of the yellow ones. So I won't, I don't believe I'll be using these with a the trailer. Um, so I'm going to skip this step for now. Uh, but again, I wanted to point it out. Basically, it's just you, you adjust this bottom one where you want it, you know, probably get this tight move this one down to a said place and then put this in and do the same for all of them. So it looks like there's 10 feet that come with for this. So anyway, we're skipping this part again because of the trailer. So stay tuned. We're going to move right along. All right. The next piece I installed uh, was these log holders and call them log dogs for now. Again, don't judge. I'll figure out these terms. Um, now the instructions say, these are supposed to have nylock nuts on the back side. They do not. Um, another thing is when you tighten these down, you don't snug them real good because this needs to move. Um, <laughs> tighten it a little bit too much with my hands, but anyway, so you can you can adjust it. So just you loosen these up, and then you got a stopper nut in the back where you can tighten all of those down, and then it allows this thing to to pivot if needed. And then you know this goes up and down. They give you some longer ones as well. So you can hold your your log on there. But anyway, I wanted to mention that I did not see any nylock nuts with that. But these things should be fine. If I get too paranoid, you can throw a little Loctite on them. I put these in. They're just long bolts. They're not carriage bolts. Um, they are just straight threaded bolts all the way up. Um, they said they were supposed to have nylock nuts, but they did not. So I'm just going to use these that were left over from doing the tracks earlier. Um, so this is one piece, and then this piece fits in it as well. So this is three pieces plus the, the uh, bolts and nuts and so on. So here's the next step and we're gonna move right along. Okay, and we are back. Uh, one thing to note, uh, these two metal shafts, this is what the saw will actually ride on up and down when you're adjusting it. The longer one goes in the front. The shorter one, goes in the back there. So I've got both of these assembled. They have a little roller on the bottom that actually fits on the track. It's got a groove. Um, so the next step is uh, just putting this on the hoist, lifting it up and putting these on and then the final assembly of all the bits and pieces. All right, we're back and you can see that this piece is assembled. Now I'm gonna tell you how I did it. Um, I was actually looking on YouTube, some other folks. I was suspect to this and it is a great way to do it. So while this thing is on the skid, uh, what I did is I put some uh, pieces of wood right down here and on that side, cause there's a, this thing comes on a metal frame over here, this guy. So I put a, a little bit of wood blocks right in here and right in there. Why? Well, I flipped this thing this way and I put one of my rugs down just so I wouldn't scratch it all up and I gently set it down. And then uh, I lifted the back so it was on an angle and you just slide this in that first one and so on for the other side and they go all the way up kind of finagle it in there they do catch in here a little bit so you're gonna have to wiggle it all around it's helpful with two people um, you could probably do it but um, maybe even uh, you know lubing it up a little bit with a little thin coating of grease inside of there may help uh, but once it's in slides right in uh, put it all the way up you will want to tighten all four of these, this one, this one, and the same. Um, just again, 19 millimeter, just tighten them down. And then once it's all slid in there, then you just pull it up and it stands right up and here it is. And it will roll. Not very easy, but it will roll. 
Um, so now I can do the, the final assembly for everything on the top. Once this is done, in order to lift it up and put it on the tracks, they give you these. These mount right up here on each side. So you can hook it up to like my chain fall or a tractor, whatever you have. That way you can lift it up and put it in place on the tracks. So stay tuned. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start doing the assembly of the top piece. And I'm gonna go through and let you know if I hit any snags. But it, it, so far I'm, I'm getting a groove and things and it, and it should go pretty, pretty well. So stay tuned. So there's one thing I do wanna mention um, that I'm gonna be doing. This uh, beam isn't mm, straight up and down. It's not square. So what I plan to do is put a level up on here. The level won't help much because my floor probably isn't level. But once this is up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my square and I'm gonna set it up against that level. And I know right now that that this beam needs to go this way. I'm gonna to try to get it squared up to this. So that's gonna be my next step before I start assembling the top half. So I'm gonna loosen up those two 19 millimeters and the same for the other side and get these squared up first. Once they are, I'm gonna mount everything to this first. Then I'm gonna loosen up the 219 on this and get this one so it fits up because the remaining pieces will bolt right up in these holes. So I'll true these front two up first to me, they're the most important because this is where the, the motor head slides up and down. And again, then I'll come back and do this and, you know, we'll loosen all that. So anyhow. All right. So this next step, there's quite a few things going on here. But in short, we put on these top pieces, um, the brackets to actually pick it up. I'm not sure exactly what this is for, but this on. And then, of course, the bracket there, bracket there, and these ones. Um on each side. Now I tighten these, I tighten these, I tighten these. I did not tighten those yet because this looks like it mounts into something. So I'm gonna hold off. Um, the instructions, you know, they're they're actually pretty decent, but I will point out something, uh, This that particular piece, the one I didn't know what it was for, um, it shows that that should have washers. Well, they don't actually, it's gonna reuse um, bolts like this, or excuse me, nuts like this one. So it looks like they bite in on their own. So just know, you'll, you'll find stuff like that where it won't have a washer where it says it does. Or I saw one where it said there's a nylock um, that we're supposed to use, but it didn't have them in the bag. So I'm going to go back if I have nylocks left over. Stuff like that. So uh, anyhow, so the next step, we're going to go ahead, add this front plate right here. That looks like uh, the majority of what we're doing and some other little bolts here and there. So we're going to do that and then come back and see where we're at. All right, so the next piece we put on was this back plate. Uh, I know that uh, the water lubrication tank goes here. Um, I need to go get some of that. I think somebody said it was safety yellow, just to kind of fix some of the scratches and nicks in it from shipping and whatnot. Um, so this thing was kind of a, a bugger to put in. Aligning these, you're gonna have to squeeze and pull and get them, you know, it's a pretty tight fit. Uh, one thing I will say though, these are 16 millimeter, but the nuts on the back are 17 millimeter. So they're just a little bigger. These use the nylock ones. That was what was in the bag. So anyhow, what I did, um, I put all these in, tightened them down, and then I also tightened these two and then those bottom two. Once, once all this was together, it made more sense. I'll show you a little bit about the underneath. This bracket, I had these loose. These are the ones that I put in here along with uh, those two there and those two there. Same for... This side, so again, these are 17, not these, these are 19, but these are 17, and then <clears throat> these bolts on the outside were 16 millimeter. Not a big deal, but just something worth noting. All right, so the next step I think we're gonna put in, uh, there's a bearing that goes in here in the long shaft, we're gonna do that next, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're at the step where we wanted to put on these bars in the back. Now, according to the instructions, these are the OS31 only um, for this particular setup that I did, but I'm sure the other models have something similar. You know, you get a couple bolts up there and down there, and we'll run this side, these two right here. And then, of course, this one. Now, the next step after that is to put in the shaft, and when you're doing this, um, this bearing, all right, it's got a little set screw, which is a three millimeter that you'll need. Now you're gonna wanna put these two in. First up, leave one of these on the inside, these braces. It'll be turned this way, so it actually goes around the bearing. You can see it's tapered. 
sort of like a race there. So you have one on the inside facing this way. This one will be on the outside. This is the exact same for the other side. Now when you do install this, you'll know there's a the longer side here that'll have a flat spot. This is gonna go out a little bit more, but this flat spot is what you're gonna mount your larger crank handle on with that set screw, which I have yet to get the size, but we'll get to that in a minute. So anyway, doing this, I'm uh, just going through the instructions. We're gonna put this in, get the bolt, tighten her down, and then move on to the next step. So stay tuned. Okay, so the next piece we're gonna put on is the cables themselves. Uh, what they wanted you to do, and the instructions are pretty good about this, um, just run it through this little section down here. Put the, the looped end through there. Run it up through the back side of this, down underneath of there, and then up. And it's important that when you fish it into here, it goes behind this. Now, you don't need to take any of these pulleys apart. Just take these nuts off, and this thing will slide right through. You can fish it right through. But here's the angle that I have mine at. And it goes behind. Same for over here. <clears throat> and then, when you get to uh, putting this on too, it was pretty simple. I tightened down the bearings. I set them so it didn't wiggle back and forth. I guess I should go back to that part. They said that it should be flush right here, which it is. And then I tightened down the two uh, three millimeters. And then this over here, I believe was a, let's see, a five, yeah, five millimeter for the set screws that are underneath this cover. And also there's two set screws here. Just be sure when you tighten these down, um, there's a flat spot, you can see it right here. There's also a flat spot for this one. Be sure it's on that and then tighten these down hard, tight. Um, the next piece they want you to do is the tensioner right here. Uh, loosen this up. Mine kind of came pre-assembled with a cable wrapped around it. So just loosen this up all the way, hook it here, fish it down on this side and wrap it around two and a half times. That should give you literally just enough room to get it into here. Um, they say do not overlap. So I kind of pushed them over a little bit right here. I mean, I've since tightened it a little bit, just gave it a little tension, but you can see how that's set up in there. Okay, so next up, we're gonna move on and uh, continue. All right, so we've added a few other things. Uh, one important note I wanted to mention um, as we're going through here, the, the <laughs> these lift brackets, make sure that you get the ones out of the proper bag. They're a 10.9 grade, where these other ones are 8.8. So you, obviously this is gonna lift them the whole unit, so you want the stronger one. So um, be sure you have the, the 10 nines in there. Uh, a couple other things, the rest of this is actually going pretty well. I mean, you put these covers in, I slid them all the way this way, just to give max clearance. Um, both sides, you can see underneath, kind of how they work, just to protect that. Um, put the bolts on underneath. Um, that's the orientation I did. There's a little star bit in there for the water tank. I put those on. Uh, first and then the flat washers and then this piece uh, those are the two major things I wanted to point out I did go ahead and lift it um, just to make sure I, I loosen this up cranked it and it lifts and it seems I had a little bit of tension on I went and I tightened this one you kind of tighten this nut down hold it underneath I think it's a 17 underneath and then a 16 right here and just tighten this down so it doesn't wiggle this one I've yet to do, so you can see how that moves a little bit. I'm just going to snug it, you know, so it won't jiggle around, but it'll still allow it to move. I did it with this one, that one over there, and then this one. So you can see that doesn't move very much. That's what I'm going to do to that other one. So and these guys are the same. They'll twist a little bit, but that's it. There's no jiggle to them. So I did that. And uh, the next couple steps, you know, we're finishing up. Some of the other things, we're going to warm the water line. Um, I'm going to install this additional piece that I picked up. You might be able to find something at a hardware store. I didn't know what this was going to look like, but this is like a $40 add-on. Um, and it's basically for the oil drain here. So when you change the oil, it doesn't, you know, drain oil all over the place. There's basically a channel where you want it to go. I've seen some other ones that are pretty nice too, so just know that... You have options, uh, obviously you can do this one, but there may be some others, but I'm gonna install this soon. Uh, an important note, when you get these, there's no oil in this. So be sure you put oil in it and everything first. I'll probably run it for a bit, change the oil, just to get all the metal flakes out that are pretty common. 
drain the float bowl, stuff like that. We're not quite ready for all that, um, but I'm gonna add uh, some handles, throttle cables, hook all that stuff up. I'll be back on shortly with all of that. And then the next big push we're gonna do is install this once the trailer arrives. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, when we do that, I've got a couple things. Stay tuned to the end, some little tips. I'll be installing the, the steel, stainless steel bunk covers and some other small things that I picked up. Um, so anyway, stay tuned. We'll have more soon. Well, as you can see, I'm a little farther ahead than uh, I let on in the in the video there. The trailer did arrive. Again, there'll be another video, so please stay tuned for that. It'll probably be short, but rather than cram into this one, we'll, we'll do two separate ones. It's a sunny, beautiful, windy day, and I've already started using this, but let me show you some of the things that I did to finish it up, button it up, um, but I do want to add this thing is awesome. It rocks. When you follow the instructions and tune it in just right, it works fantastic. So let's go over it right now. So some of the final pieces that I did, um, I ran the water hose. I ran it through this spot right here and down into there. You can see it's dragging a little bit. So one of the additions after using it for a bit that I'm going to do is just zip tie it right in here lightly like I did here. Um, this is the kill switch cable. Kill switch was super easy to put together. There's uh, a couple screws. If you can see them, there's one there and one on the other side. When you loosen those up, the whole thing just falls apart. And then once it does, you know, you just put this outside piece in. Boom. Um, you push it to turn it off, give it a little twist, pops out, you're good to go. Um, earlier on, I talked about the tension right here. Uh, I did mention keep this lubed down inside of there. So when you loosen up the tension, it allows this to be turned. And, you know, you just want to make sure that's, that's kept lubed. So I've been spraying some white lithium grease out of a spray can in there. It's been working great for me. Throttle cable, um, that runs up just like so. I was able to put a little washer on the bottom part inside of here because this was a little floppy and I wasn't a big fan of the floppy. So that helped it out quite a bit, but it does, it works quite well. Got the adjustment there, just perfect. So you can see when I squeeze it, it just barely starts to move. It's awesome. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we did get this on right here. I talked about that a little bit earlier. I gave you the measurement. I think it was 35 and three quarters on center for these. So what I ended up doing was I had this on the trailer and it was in the shop and then I just hooked the chain fall up to it and a little nervous because this thing's pretty heavy and everything, but it went on without a hitch. Just put it on, dropped it on and everything was fantastic. Um, I did also, and I'll put this in the description, I picked up some of this grippy tape on Amazon. It won't go back this far, but I just have it grippy in case I need to stand on it for whatever reason or anything of that sort. I'm gonna do the same with the very last piece on my extension. Once I, uh, whew, that wind kicked up once I get that finished up. Uh, this uh, right here holds about three gallons of, right now it's water because it's summertime. I'll probably put in something like uh, windshield washer fluid. Uh, one of the other things that I did here is put on this. This is your scales as they call it. So I haven't read enough of the instructions for the blue line, haven't needed it yet. Not sure what it does, uh, but I'll figure it out. If, if you know off the top of your head without me researching it, please post it in the comments below. Uh, the red line is basically supposed to be where the cut is. So in order to, to tune this thing in, okay, what you'll do is once you get your blade set up, you're going to measure it. You'll slide it up to the bunk like so, and then take a measurement from here to the blade. And then that's what you're going to set your adjustment to for this red line. That's what I've been using. It's been working out really, really well. Um, another thing I can mention. Oh, uh, let's see. This holds the logs. This is fantastic for larger logs right here. It'll tighten up just great. This little guy, invaluable. So when you're cutting, a, say you're doing a two by four or something, the blade's gonna come pretty close. So you'll be able to hook this in and then clamp it down on a two by four. And that way you can get a cut. I think you can get, gosh, like an inch. You can do an inch off the bunks. It's about as low as you can go with this. That will allow you to hook up <clears throat> at a very low point on it. Uh, so let's see, on the, the tensioning and getting the, the, the wheels, camber, whatever you want to call it, in and out, um, this right here is what you'll adjust for the wheels. I was doing half turns at a time, and I would uh, rotate the blade as it is supposed to go. So as you're tensioning this and getting those adjusted, always spin it this way. They're going to want you to do it three times. 
to make sure that it's done properly. Um, don't spin it the other way because it'll want to come right off the wheels. So just save you a little bit of time there. So once you get that done, follow the instructions in the book. It works fantastic. Um, then you're going to adjust these. I adjusted them in and out. They give you the measurements, eighth of a sixteenth, or eighth or a sixteenth, off the little ball bearings that are behind here. You can't see they're covered in sawdust. And the same for the little plastic pieces. Um, this blade should float in between those. So that's uh, that's it for brunt of the rest of the assembly that I might have missed in the video. Except, you know, the battery. That one's pretty simple. Um, I put some foam down in there for the battery to sit on. Otherwise, it sits right on the steel. And the bolts in the bottom, I didn't like that. So that's one small thing I did if you happen to get the electric start version. Which is pretty nice. Uh... So let's see, let's talk about operating the saw a little bit now that I've, I've done a few boards. So let's say you get yours done, you're pumped like I was to get going on it. Um, these little felt pads, you get two of them, at least I did with mine. They said to soak them in kerosene overnight. I did that, put them in there. What they're supposed to do, because they have a little notch in the bottom, they're going to go ahead and get the debris off this track. But as you can see, debris does stick and it's not getting it off. So another guy that I saw on YouTube, what he was doing is he made basically mimic these with some hardwood blocks with a little notch in the bottom so it would glide and clean this as it goes. I'm going to experiment and try that, but just to let you know that might be some challenge uh, you'll have in the future. I did uh, also mention this part. I didn't know what it was for originally. Um, this is basically to make sure this is level because if it is not right here, when you roll this thing, it's going to it could affect your cut there so it's going to drop and so on so you want to keep that level what i also did is i grabbed a file and i went over this all the way down the track on the top the sides and kind of lightly rounded it just a little tiny bit just to take away any of the burrs and so on from manufacturing that was pretty helpful too it glides quite smooth and uh, let's see the other bits and pieces that i have uh yeah, these adjusters, I used the small ones for a little bit and then realized the bigger ones are probably what you're going to use the most of. So I don't even know if you'll use the little ones for much. Um, so these ones, you know, they go up and down just like the others. The only thing that these don't have is there's a little stopper on the short ones that lets it go down only so far. These don't have them, so if you loosen it up, it falls to the ground. Not a big deal. Uh, these things, I, I, I put some silicone on here that I thought about ripping off just to hold them in there a little bit because I have the trailer and going down the road I don't want them to fly off was this a good idea I don't know we'll see I'll find out once I haul it I still have a four of them sitting around waiting so if these do fall out I have extras but uh that's something I'm also experimenting with I don't plan on traveling much with it but I am going to be making a trip to our northern property to to mill some wood up there and I'm, again, I'm not going to cover any of the trailer. That's going to be another video. But there's some interesting information with that that I found was uh, pretty cool. So anyway, that is probably my review for this. I'm sure as I cut more, I'm going to be able to put some videos out there and show you a little bit. There's already quite a few on YouTube, but hopefully you like these videos. If it was helpful, please click that like button. And, and down there, click the subscribe. Click the little bell. You get notified next time I have a video out. Um, we could talk about how we make 2 by 4s I made some 2x4s, and they're actually pretty cool. I made some other dimensions too, just playing around, but um, they, it does a fantastic job. I am very impressed with the saw. Uh, very, very impressed. So, Anyhow, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, again, the trailer you'll see soon. And if you have any questions, comments, please put them down below. And thanks very much. Have yourself a great day.